What's going on? My club's empty out front. <laughs> Where's everybody going? We should get away from any peeping toms, right? Uh, I gotta go. I gotta work. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll park back here. Hurt. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. Alright, well fine. <laughs> I guess you didn't enjoy your little ride in the Bugassi. <laughs> Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lewis and Zog. Welcome back for more Grand Theft Auto Online. So here we are out back of my nightclub, just uh, by the back door here. And we're going to be going in to get ourselves an Oppressor Mark II, the Vagazi Oppressor Mark II. Yep, the uh, flying hover bike. So uh, it came out with the After Hours DLC, and uh, it's kind of sort of attached to our nightclub, strangely enough. You'd think it'd be attached to Smuggler's Run or the Arena War or something, but no, no, it's part of nightclub management. <laughs> so uh, let's head inside. Let's go get our terabyte. That'll disappear once we switch our vehicles anyway, so it'll be okay. <laughs> All right, so our first via episode back in a little while. Let's go down to the terabyte garage. So you can buy an Oppressor Mark II without a nightclub. That said, you don't really want to. Um, you know, uh, there's a few things wrong with that. Um, first, you can't work on it at all. So the only way you can work on it is in the back of a terabyte truck like this one right here, our terabyte truck here. So in order to be out buy a terabyte, you have to have a nightclub like we're in right now. So you need to buy a nightclub and then you go on the internet and you would go to Warstock Cash and Carry right there and you would find the listing for the terabyte. It's going to move around, but for now it's right there. So you would buy the terabyte and then yeah, let's pop out here and then you'd get your terabyte and it automatically creates a, a new floor in your nightclub. So you automatically get level B5 as it says way over there. And that's where the, uh, the uh, terabyte truck appears. Yeah, so let's head inside. Maybe we'll just order it inside. Why not? There we go. Inside our nightclub-y terabyte. <laughs> Very black lighty. So this right here is the Oppressor Mark II bay. And we're going to get an Oppressor Mark II to put in there. So that's the only place where you can actually work on it. And you do want that because uh, um, you generally want to add on missiles and other, other add-ons like that. So it's generally recommended. So you definitely want to buy a nightclub and buy a terabyte if you want an Oppressor Mark II. Now next to that, there's the price. So let's bring it up and let's order it. And we'll talk about that price. So I think it's under Warstock Cash and Carry here. There it is right there. Part of After Hours. Seats 1. The Oppressor Mark II. So in many ways, the Oppressor Mark I and Mark II are very different bikes. They're both bikes, they both seat one, um, but in many ways, the Oppressor Mark I is a glider, and the Oppressor Mark II is a, is a rocket bike, a hover bike. So they're very different in, in a way that way, even though they both share the name of the Oppressor. All right, so there it is for $2,925,000. All right, and that's the trade price. So that's the discounted price already. I'm getting a little, a little bit of coffee. Hmm. Much better. So um, the normal price that uh, I don't have because I've already got it unlocked here. So the normal price is three million eight hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So very expensive. That said, it is a very valuable workhorse as we're going to see. Um, but yeah, it is definitely worth, get, worth getting the trade price. So you get the trade price by getting a, a nightclub, getting the terabyte, and then you would run five missions from inside the terabyte. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to let me, being that I'm inside here. Can't remember if I can access this inside or if I have to drive the truck outside to do that. No, it's gonna let me access it. So once you have your terabyte, you can access this touchscreen, and then from there, you can um, uh, 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 launch the uh, client jobs right here in the top left. So I'm in the, uh, the the garage right now, so they're unavailable. So these missions, you do need to run five of them in order to get the trade mission. Right, so you uh, you actually only need to run them five times, I should say. So at first I used to think that it was five different missions, but actually you could run the same mission five times. So uh, missions like diamond shopping are very easy, robbery in progress is very easy, and actually uh, uh, data sweep is very easy too. All of them can be done pretty quickly. Yep, and that said, after you get your Oppressor Mark II, these missions are even easier with your Oppressor Mark II. Some people think these missions are made for the Oppressor Mark II because they're even better and even easier when you have one. So run one of these missions five times, and then you save almost a million dollars, bringing it down from 3.8 um, to 2.9 million dollars. We can retire from that for now. All right, let's get back in there and order it. The Oppressor Mark II. 
the Abrezzo Mark II is a landmark in hybrid vehicle design. Well, the Mark II takes off where its little brother landed, and it never comes down. <laughs> this is about the closest you can get to throwing a saddle on a rocket engine, bolting on some heavy optional ever heavy artillery, and pressing the big red button. <laughs> Alright, please know this vehicle can only be modified at the Specialized Workshop inside the Terabyte, as we were saying. Buy it now. So spend some of our lots of millions, our hard-earned millions. Let's put it around the corner to Del Perro, why not? Be traditional, our first episode back. Alright, let's head off into the cabin here. I might as well take our terabyte out and drive it over there. It's just around the corner. And we're going to bring in the Oppressor Mark II in here to uh, work on it anyway. So as I was saying, you can buy an Oppressor Mark II without a nightclub and without the terabyte, but you get only stock options, which means machine guns and that's it. Yeah, not very good options. Okay. <laughs> All right, Del Barrel Apartments. Mm, that might be good. Might be in the way of some civilians parking, but that's okay. Or should I? Eh. Yeah, it should be. It should be enough space. Yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So let's head inside and see it up here. Yeah, so definitely something different from Bagazi. Not a supercar, but a weaponized bike. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Yeah, so this uh, vehicle did have a glitch, like many other vehicles, uh, when it came out. And if you drove it, if you flew it backwards, it can go insanely fast. But that glitch has since been fixed. So just so you guys know, if any of your friends tell you about it, that's already been fixed. So it still does go very fast, though. And we'll get into talking about that, too. So it does, uh, right now, it drives about 125 miles per hour. With the boost, you can get up to about 135 miles per hour. Well, it's taken me a while to get inside my garage here, isn't it? I think it's been a while, a while since I was inside this crash. Did we get lost inside there? <laughs> Tell Peril Parmed. Hello? <laughs> uh -huh. Hmm. I might may have to reload it. Spawn location. Let's change that to Del Perro. Garage. There we go. All right, Del Perro Vermins. So welcome back, everybody. So, unfortunately, that's still a problem that happens every now and again. It just kind of hangs while you're uh, trying to go into a, a garage or inside a place of some sort. I used to think it had something to do with the other players, but even on an invite-only session like we are now, it can still happen to you like you just seen. Boo, that should be two thumbs down. <laughs> All right, so here we are. There it is. Yay, it appeared. All right, it's a good thing, because it took our money. <laughs> All right, so there's our Pegasi Oppressor Mark II. Comes in a nice shiny metallic blue by the looks of it. Pearlescent blue? Yeah, maybe black with pearlescent blue. It's nice looking in stock, actually. Yeah, we're going to get it upgraded, and then it'll look even more like the movie bike. So for some people, this is another uh, movie vehicle. Um, for some people, this is the uh, um, the bike from uh, Looper, so the movie Looper. Yeah, which is kind of a uh, futuristic time travel kind of movie. And in there, there's the flying bike in there. Yeah, very cool. Let's take it outside. Yeah, I got to bounty from stealing cars <laughs> it's a good time to be working on a, a new vehicle oh there's our machine guns so hopefully I don't die too much <laughs> oh yeah very cool so just letting it go and see I just kind of hover very cool now we're dropping down that's awesome Yeah. So, um, like I was saying, it goes about 100 up to 135 miles per hour using the boost. 
and uh, up to about 85 miles per hour in the air. But remember in the air it can go, seem to go faster because obstacles don't stop you. You can fly right over buildings and rivers and all those kinds of things. Now how do I hit the boost? Hmm, that one? No, nope, not that one, not that one. That's machine guns. That's boost. Ah, okay. So if you slow down to under 20 miles per hour, the boost fills right back up. That little yellow bar in the bottom left. Just blinking away there. Now the main thing of the boost is, is acceleration. So it really only gives you an extra 5 miles per hour on the top speed. So it's really not about top speed. It won't do much for top speed. But it will help you accelerate. As you guys can see, it, it uh, doesn't recharge. I think it actually does recharge, but very, very slowly. Unless you let off the accelerator. And then there, as you guys can see, it's just filling right back up right away. Very cool. Yeah, apparently we can fly upside down if we angle it right. Imagine you'd have to like go up the building over there, that, that bridge there, or maybe this building. Yeah, let's try this. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh. Woohoo. I was going to say, a newbie pilot doing this is probably not the best combination, but it's okay. Yeah, for any of you new players, it's still a good workhorse. It's, uh, you know, I call it a workhorse because, you know, on MC cell missions, if you're doing them solo, it's a great vehicle to have to be able to go back and forth to your different cell vehicles. You know, so you go to the one garbage truck, let's say, and then finish everything, and then you hop on your Oppressor Mark II to go back and grab the other truck and keep going. So it's a great vehicle to have for that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, um, even without all the upgrades, it's still very useful. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very different. And for a lot of people, it's a love-hate relationship with this because it's caused a lot of um, problems. It's basically a, a griefer's dream with this, but it's also a great grinder's tool. So I guess it's a, it's like a sword. It's all about who's holding it. <laughs> you know, not so much about the sword's fault. It's it's about what people do with it. Can I go inside my my office? Whoa, not like that again. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get a pop-up. I could just land on there so it wouldn't be an issue, but I'm just curious if I get the pop-up to land on my office. No, you don't. But I could just manually land and then go in the office door. All right, oh, uh, let's call in the Terabyte. So Terabyte disappeared because I had to reload. So you, can, you call up your interactive menu, Terabyte Services, request Terabyte. For those of you who are going to be new to the Terabytes and the nightclubs in general. That should appear somewhere nearby soon. There it is. Let's see what this looks like. First person. Oh, a little... little meter. It says 110. Oh, you know, I think they did boost it. I'm not sure if my notes are up to date. But they fixed that glitch, as I said, the backward speed glitch. But they did, um, you know... Even though a lot of people were disappointed that they fixed that, they did actually give it a tiny boost of 10 miles per hour at the time, so maybe that's why. But sometimes these gauges are not accurate, as many of you guys know. Sometimes these gauges are more like, it gives you an idea, but sometimes they're not always accurate in the game. From what I understand, anyway. So there's our terabyte. Let's go upgrade it. Wow, this is, like, a lot easier than I expected it to be. Oh, jeez, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa. And then I hit the boost by accident. <laughs> Accidentally kills the body. They're okay. They're okay. They just need to take the day off. They'll be all right. So how do I get down? Because it seems like I hit reverse and I reverse and I go forward and I reverse. And you can just wait and it drops you down. So that's kind of cool. All right. First time I've used this back door. <laughs> Inside the terabyte. Now, do I have to hop on? Oh, hey, yeah. LJT here. Yes, busy you know LJT. The length of your prison? Oh, yes. It's ready to go again. That's okay. We're spending money. It's okay. We got lots of money to spend. <laughs> so let's see. Hop on? Yeah, I must have to hop on. All right. Not the greatest view in tight quarters in here, is it? 
Yeah, get the first person or the third person. Up close view. Or extra close. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that'll do. All right, armor upgrade for $50,000. Sold. Countermeasures. All right, so it gets white smoke by default, which is pretty much useless. All right, so there's chaffs and flares for your main countermeasures. Now, um, you know, it depends on your style, which one you want. I'm probably going to go with chaffs. Most people generally consider the chaffs to be better, to be the best. So the chaffs um, block any kind of lock-on. So stop anybody from locking on to you and missile locking you. So that's awesome. The problem with it is that you kind of have to be anticipating that people are going to be trying to get you and hitting them ahead of time. So if somebody already locked on to you and fires a missile, then the chaff won't help. The chaff won't stop the missile that's already locked on and fired. So, but chaffs can stop anybody from locking on and firing anymore. So generally speaking, people prefer the shafts. Now the flare does stop a missile. So you fire flares and it will stop any missiles. That said, it will only fire, it will only stop one missile at a time. And most people can fire missiles at you faster than you can fire flares. So some people consider flares to be a losing thing. Even though they will guarantee to stop a missile, they can't stop that more that's needed. The second and third and chaffs will stop all the missile locks. So 70,000 for that, we're gonna get chaffs. Engine, hmm. Okay, well, engine tunes, level four, 33,500. No extra room for them? No, guess not. No room for that. <laughs> engine block. All right, vortex engine. Oh. Now, you can't really see it very well. But to some people, it just kind of changes it to be a little bit more jet engine. So a stock engine block kind of makes it look like a bike with a, with a, well, kind of a bike attached to a jet engine. These parts, from what I understand, the Vortex engine just gives it a few little parts that make it look a little bit more futuristic rather than uh, regular bike. Modern, I guess you could say retro future versus future future, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna get the Vortex engine. It's flying, hover, rocket bike, why not? It's uh, very futuristic. All right, lights, headlights, Xenon lights. Oh, I might change that actually. Hmm, we'll see. That should be good for now. Oh, I don't think I can take this in the arena war. I was just thinking I could take it in the arena war and change the headlights, but I don't think it would let me. Hmm. Liveries, we'll get to that in a moment. And weapons. All right, stock machine guns, as I said. Dual machine guns in the front. And explosive MGs, which a lot of people like. It's 275,000. Now that said, it's actually not the preferred one. So the most popular, the, the recommended choice is homing missiles, which I'm probably gonna get right now. That's why I see a lot of them out there. Explosive MG is cool, but a lot of people wanted uh, weapons like the Hydra has, you know, the explosive cannon like the Savage has on the front. Unfortunately, it's not like that. It has a very short range and a very slow rate of fire. So even though it's not uh, limited in ammo, it's still not the greatest weapon for it in most people's opinion and uh, overpriced in that sense. Now the homing missiles, 180,000, you get 20 homing missiles and they're incredibly good at locking on. They're incredibly fast and amazing auto lock on uh, missiles. So very good. Um, there goes only 20 of them at a time. But that said, all you have to do is despawn your, your uh, bike and respawn it or bring it into the uh, terabyte like we're in right now and then it's reloaded. So it's very easy, quick and fast to reload. Yeah. Homing missiles for 180,000. All right, library choices. I'm not sure what colors I'm gonna pick either. And those libraries might be kind of hard to see, I think, on this. Hmm, let's give it a respray. Primary and secondary colors, so no trims or anything. Chrome, <laughs> actually kind of suits it. A little too blingy for my, my liking, but very futuristic. I think some of the coloring in here is because of my black lights <laughs> that my uh, terabyte has. But I think we're just going to go with ice white for a second. I'll throw away the 2000 for a second. And maybe that'll help us see the liveries before I decide on colors. So there's your basic camo, which is now kind of an air cow. <laughs> That's my white on there. Zancudo camo. Sprayed camo. Pretty simple one. Three color outline. Actually, it works pretty well on that. Adds more detail to the bike. 90s sandbox. Modern five color. 
Arid Theater. And Winter Camo. That's kind of cool. Urban Warrior. Nature Reserve. Naval Battle. Hmm, monkey. Urban Geometric. Hmm. Coyote Geometric. And some of these are bunker unlocks that I've gotten. Large Geometric. Naval Geometric. Desert Fractal. Urban Fractal. Large Digital. Medium Digital. Small Digital. Blue Tartan. I think that was a gift during the After Hours Weeks. <laughs> Very cool. Santa Copra Coins. Hmm. Probably another free gift one. Okay, what colors? What things go best? Hmm. Well, a lot of these are really nice, actually. Like that urban, uh, urban fractal is kind of nice. Yeah. But a lot of these kind of have a air cow quality, you know. But if I change the white, it wouldn't quite look so cowish. <laughs> but, uh, or I guess it could be horse steed. Or you read that online. <laughs> Your modern futuristic steed. But I'm thinking kind of a futuristic bike. Sometimes I like that urban geometric because it has little dots on it and makes it almost kind of look like a, a metallic, you know, kind of like a riveted look. Yeah, sometimes. That large geometric's nice and sharp on there. Hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of too bad. I wish they had some more on here actually. Uh, I think it's good to use some decals and some stripes and things like that. There's a couple of basic uh, libraries that I really expected it to have, but it doesn't. Hmm. Naval Battle is very busy. Nature Reserve is actually not too bad. Well, I was thinking of something blue, maybe something. You know, I do like black, but it's kind of boring. But I think it would look really well, really good on this. So with metals. But uh, maybe I will go with something livery. Maybe a naval geometric. Or maybe we should just keep it clean. No liveries. Mm. So there's our metals. Brushed black. Brushed aluminum. Beer gold. Which actually doesn't look as bad as you would think. Brushed gold. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. Dark, yet shiny. We'll have a look at the metallics here. So, black. Black is nice. Black is black. <laughs> Go through the grays, silvers, stone silvers. That's nice. Midnight Silver is nice. Very similar to that stock blue, but a little different. More metal. Reds. Torino Red. I wasn't sure if I wanted this to be military or dark or stealth or a show bike. Hmm. It is pretty crazy futuristic, so maybe I should go with something like red or blue. Yeah, looks great in a lot of these colors, though. You know, for what it is, anyway. For like a crazy looking bike, you know, in yellow or oranges, it looks great metals and then, like I said darkness uh, urban colors greens if you want it to blend in on their ground so people don't see it so well moss brown that's cool spinnaker purple that's kind of nice midnight purple bright purple hmm. cream and ice white now you can really see the pearlescent making quite a difference there like uh, how the gleam changes there from cream right there to disappears when I go to ice white. Makes quite a difference on certain colors and certain vehicles. The shadow work, I guess you could say. Torina reds. Hmm. Well, what to go with? Well, let's go back to the blues here. Midnight blue. I'm just going to have a look at the blues. Hmm.
I like that dark shine of the midnight blue. I also like that harbor blue, which I've looked at on a few things, but I think that actually looks best on this, on all the vehicles I've seen it on. But I was also thinking about that spinnaker purple, which is almost another blue, really. Hmm. Yep, I think I might go with the spinnaker purple. Or the midnight purple, I should say. Let's see. Yeah, midnight purple. Gives it a nice dark look. You know, very dark, but at the same time, it's kind of blingy, kind of futuristic shine and whatnot. Got some color, got some blue in there, but still dark. Yeah, I like it. Kind of a mix of everything. Midnight Purple for 13750 Now, I should have looked already, but that's okay. The secondary color. What is the secondary? So that is these lines, so at least you get kind of a lined livery, like I was talking about earlier, by using the secondary color. Yeah, I might be tempted to just go with a black to blend it right in. I think that's already what it is, yeah. But I'm going to quickly have a look. It'd be nice if I could turn the camera around some other ways, but... Cannot. Yeah, it's to be on the black or maybe make it a midnight blue or a full spinnaker purple. Oh yeah, midnight purple, the darker one. Keep getting them mixed up. Hmm, I think actually I think I like that midnight blue secondary. There we go. Done. I don't think I want any libraries, I'm just going to quickly kind of go through them just to see what they look like on it. Yeah, different. I don't mind it, but I like it clean, I think, on this one. All right. Let's see. Exit the vehicle workshop. Hey, that's not what I was supposed to do. There we go. <laughs> All right, here we are. Oh, much more blue or er, purple in the sunlight. So that's the vortex changes. Slight differences. A little bit more futuristic look now. And there was no upgrades to, uh, uh, to other stuff. I guess there wouldn't be any suspension or anything like that. No transmission, nothing like that. And no real bodywork ones too. I thought there was actually a bunch, but there really wasn't. There was just uh, the vortex engine or not. under <laughs> whoa that stopped like way faster than i wanted yeah so there are faster vehicles than this in the game you know some people may not realize that when they buy them but um it's hard to explain um, i guess i would say that if you were racing you know like if i was in a my Akula or my avenger it's actually faster aircraft so if we were racing each other across the map on your oppressor or mark ii it would actually beat it you know across the map now that said when you're fighting a lot of people if you're in like a close proximity, like a like a city block here, because of the acceleration, because of the boost, because of the brake and being able to change direction, I'm just a newbie at this right now too. So give me practice and I'd be much better, I'm sure. But because of that, it can feel like this is faster. And in a sense, it is faster in that, in that um, dog fighting radius, if that makes sense to you guys. So long range, not so good compared to other vehicles. But short range, the acceleration and brakes and uh, capabilities are just amazing. 
Yeah, it just turns on a dime. Yeah. Now you also get a parachute too. So, um, you know, uh, for those that don't know, um, for a long time in the game, whenever you jumped into an air vehicle, it would give you a free parachute. So if I jumped off right now, I would have a parachute. It's good to know. Yeah, some things like apparently the Deluxo, which is another flying car, um, it does not give you a parachute. So if you jump out, you fall. <laughs> so if you don't already have a parachute, you might fall. But um, something like this will replace your parachute every time you hop on it. Yeah, so let's find out what happens here right now. Woo! -hoo. Yeah! <laughs> oh, oh, that was a rough hit for my bike, wasn't it? Very rough. I expected it to hover down. <laughs> Apparently not so much so. Uh oh. Oh, oh. So yeah, I'm rusty. <laughs> yeah, that's how you don't do it. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, all right, where is the bike? <laughs> eh, more body armor, why not? Why not? Nope, oh, nope. Oh. Yeah, so. Now I've got a parachute again. So just hopping on this gives you parachutes over and over. So you could basically jump up all day, jump off all day long. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So another handy thing about about using it. And of course, in your MC, you'd be able to just simply um, despawn it, and respawn it in, and things like that. You don't always have to run back and get it. Things like that. So let's launch head under. <laughs> yeah, so we have 20 missiles, unless we respawn it. And it does show up as a map icon, the map icon that you've seen when I hopped off of it. Maybe I'll show you guys again here. Now we'll go kill that guy. Yeah, I gotta work on my... Ah, it's the all wheel brake. So it's your J brake that actually helps you go down. So let me just try that again just to be sure. Yeah, and then we drop right away. All right, good to know. Very cool, very cool, very awesome. I like this new little toy. <laughs> it's too bad it's a griefer's toy, but it's also everybody else's toy too. Now, style. I got something, something a little weird together for it, for a weird bike. Where is it? I went by it twice. There we go. A Brother's Ark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very futuristic. Ah, oh, you know, he's kind of red, so maybe I should go with the red on it. I wasn't happy with that purple. I do like the purple, don't get me wrong. But I was thinking about that blue. I think my nightclub uh, black lights kind of changed the color in there. But if I do keep an outfit like this, it might be better to go with black and reds or something. All right, let's go kill that guy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I gotta work on my shirt turns. So how do we turn out? Well, that's nice and easy. Wow. You'd think you'd shoot too late in most other aircraft, but not with this. With this, it just turned like that. The missile uh, targeting capabilities on this, on these types of vehicles, and especially this vehicle, are crazy. So as on the new missiles, some people don't realize that missiles are different in the game on different vehicles. And they are. Some of the newer missiles are deadly. Yeah, some people do not like this vehicle as a as a opponent because of the fact that these missiles are near undodgeable. They're very difficult to dodge. You have to be very quick uh, or use your chaffs, things like that. The only good thing is that they only have 20 of them at a time. How do I turn? Oh, there we go. I gotta get... So they're different controls than your uh, than your air vehicles, which I'm used to, because it's a uh, not an air vehicle. I keep pressing the boost instead of my hit my target, but that's okay. I'm a newbie, uh, you know. At this, I'm actually not doing too bad for the first time out. It's easy to control. Actually, I'd say so far it's two thumbs up. It's uh, quite easy for for just uh, for even somebody on the first time, and with practice, I'd only get better. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> I keep expecting more momentum, like more, more uh, inertia. But it does not have it. Let's see if we can... There we go. Targeted the VIP. I can do this mission much faster, normally. But we're playing around with this. So that's alright. Oh, I keep... <laughs> I was hitting my boost instead of my missiles, and now I'm hitting my missile instead of my boost. So. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm not sure how many missiles I got left. Doesn't really tell you anywhere that I've seen. Four targets. Hopefully we got enough. Probably hit him right from there, but I don't want to get a good view. Oh, went underneath us, of course. We'll catch him on the other side of that bridge. That's a police officer. That's not what we want. Go target the other guy. There we go. Nice. Woohoo! Into the future we go. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. Cinematic camera has a hard time keeping up with it, doesn't it? Woohoo! From here, it looks like you're going like 300 miles per hour. <laughs> That's crazy. And you do need your um, your charge to be full. So even though my charge is only half full. I can't use it unless I let it fully fill up by letting go of the gas. Hmm. So think of your booster as an acceleration boost, not so much as a uh, as a top speed increase. Yeah, well, I think that's about everything. It's an awesome vehicle that way. Very weak. You're very exposed. Um, that way, but at the same time, because it's a bike in your MC, you can call it in over and over. So. So right now we've probably only got a couple of missiles left. Oh, 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 that was not the way to do it. <laughs> Oops. Well, so much for that. <laughs> Let's call Moors. Think my money's still over here somewhere. <laughs> MMI. We expect the unexpected. There we I'll go. I'll do my best. Okay, now let's hop into our MC Motorcycle Club, and hopefully we don't get raided by anything. Apparently our cocaine's full right now. All right, now we're gonna call in one of our bikes, which is the Oppressor Mark II, crazily enough. Now normally it would appear right next to you, but there are some places on the map where it doesn't, like the beach. So I'm going to have to run over here and grab it here for us. But anyway, um, in a lot of places, like if I was on the street over there, we could do that in just moments. Land, um, go to your MC, return the bike. You know, if you still had it intact, unlike mine, <laughs> you could return the bike and then uh, respawn it again right afterwards. Call for your bike and then it would show up with new missiles. <laughs> We're going to have to really work on that. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I definitely think two thumbs up for that. I definitely like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Midnight Blue instead. And for our secondary. I was thinking about that black and red, but mm, we'll see. 
Blue and red might work. It doesn't always go well together, blue and red. But sometimes they do. Let's see. It goes with his eyes and his arms there in the best. Mm. That's probably pretty bright though. Yeah, the best would be Torino red without uh, doing anything major to it, so. Kind of gives you your oppressor man. We'll go with that for now. Maybe later on I'll change it to black or something. But for now that'll work. All right, there we go. Oppressor man. <laughs> oppressor twos. Yep. Sock the oppressor man. in the front there. Don't get a beeping or anything though, just nothing happens. Hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna stop here, drop right down, and again I'm sure I could do this faster if I was uh, not so new at it. A little awkward. Okay, we're still in our MZ so we're gonna return vehicle to storage, and then I'm gonna call it in again. And this is where the beauty of the uh, Presser Mark II really comes in for a lot of people because you can just spawn it in over and over. The MC um, has no spawn uh, uh, vehicle spawn cooldown timer, so you can spawn it in over and over and over as you need be. Now I should have full missiles again. Yep, missiles right there. Ready to go all over again. Woohoo, I hit the right boost this time. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Gotta work on that break and stop. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> if you practice it, you can apparently fly upside down. Like I was saying. But you kind of have to work on that uh, holding it there while you're there. <laughs> all right and i think that's everything on our list so yeah nice another new uh, movie uh, vehicle to add to our collection yep. and you do want to watch out for water although you can easily go over water but uh, any kind of contact with water will destroy it but that said you can go over the water just like a hovercraft just like the deluxo can and it's one of the fastest uh, water vehicles in the game that way, when you really think about it. And it can turn faster than the Sea Shark. Yep. But you do want to watch out for not going into the water at any point. Oh, that's quarter ter terabyte. It's just over there. Uh-oh. It's not missile the terabyte. <laughs> to work on that. Wow, very sensitive, but easy to control too. <laughs> All right, <laughs> kind of scary. <laughs> uh, did I save it? I think I did save it. My Picasso shirt. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching our Oppressor Mark II episode. So hopefully that helps you uh, decide if you want one. I think they're definitely very useful. And as I said, the very number one useful thing to me is as a grinder's tool. Being able to um, uh, go back and forth from my MCU cell vehicles, being able to quickly go back and forth between all my different um, uh, businesses to resupply them, and basically be able to save time wherever possible that way. Yeah, So and it's a cool vehicle that you can call in through your MC which is probably one of the best things about it. Similar to the CEO and the uh, CEO menu and the buzzard, the, uh, the MC menu and the uh, 
and the vehicle menu, being able to call that right in is also amazing. Yeah, and unfortunately can be abused by some, so don't use it. Don't use it for wrong. <laughs> don't use it for evil. Use it for good. <laughs> or for fighting evil. Yeah, sometimes the only way to fight somebody on these is with one of these. Now that said, you know, it's easy to kill somebody with one of these. Like a lot of people don't understand because, you know, if you take a hunter against one of these, like an Apache helicopter, generally speaking, the Apache is better, you know. But the problem is that, um, or, well, depending on who you are, I guess, the problem is that you can keep on spawning these over and over, whereas the Apache person has to go back and forth to the to the aircraft spawn points, and uh, um, it generally takes longer to get more of them back and forth than it does to just keep calling these in through the MC menu. And uh, all the other vehicles have a cooldown timer of two minutes, whereas the MC menu for calling in your bikes has zero cooldown timer, so you can call these over and over and over until the Apache's out of the sky. Yeah, so deadly that way. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So a couple other little notes about this too is um, it goes like crazy on the ground. Actually, maybe I'll show you that. But uh, it also um, uh, cannot target players on the ground. So and uh, by players I mean like regular people on foot. So if you're in, if they're in vehicles. It can target them, but it will not target regular players walking around, like many other uh, air vehicles apparently too. But uh, but it cannot target uh, regular players that are on foot. So watch out for that. You may have to just aim your fire your missiles, or or avoid them altogether, or get off and use a different vehicle or a different weapon, I should say. And it also is kind of hard to shoot things in front of you or down at this angle, I should say. So you kind of do have to angle it kind of like that, but you can't do it very well. So as you can see, if I wanted to shoot somebody right down there, I'd have a big higher, a big problem. I'd have to back up, and maybe I could get them into range. So watch out for that. But it's kind of cool how it hits the ground and then, oh, and the jets start. And the little jets there lean forward, and backwards. Fly along ground level, crazy like whoa! But unlike uh, unlike regular bikes, you don't seem to fly off as easy. You know, you don't seem to crash off. Most of my other bikes, I would have flown off with many of these collisions. Yeah, so it does seem to hold on very well. It's good to know. <laughs> Probably better off to fly than to try to drive it. But I thought I'd try for the fun of it. Make some uh, cool screenshots like this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So very cool. Two thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Welcome back for our latest episode. Glad you're here. Thanks for uh, being here. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And thanks to all our Patreon supporters, too. Uh, big help for everybody. So thanks for watching. Yeah, hopefully that helps you make up your mind for your own oppressor. I really like the oppressor mark too. It's a great grinder's tool. Um, great for getting back and forth around the map to all your all your businesses to resupply them, and great to get back and forth to the cell vehicles on certain missions. So it's an excellent vehicle to have. I'd say the only downsides are you're exposed, and it only seats one, so it's kind of hard to take a friend with you. But hopefully your friend has one too, and you can go around. Now watch out for them on the map, because unfortunately, like I said, they are a griefer's tool too. But hopefully you'll use it for good. I know I will. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you again next time. Woo. Woo. Away. <laughs>
but now she's taking a lot of my abuse, my damage. Let's see if it helps when I jump from a sitting still position. Oh, I hit the get down button, it just drops. So there is no quick get off button unless you're driving. I think it might be broken. <laughs> I think we broke it. It won't go anywhere. Except down and rock it. Maybe it's because I got the press the get out button. Yep. Weird. Well, that's really weird. Well, that's almost like weird because you, you could get stuck like that for a long time. I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, so, yeah, so you don't want to hit the get out button, because when you do, it drops you right down. See, the wings come in, and then it goes right down. That's really cool. So if you want to stop on a, on a spot way down below you, you can just do that and drop right down on it. So unlike what I just did, though, watch out for doing it way up high, because then you're stuck and your engine's turned off, and you got to wait till you head all the way down to the bottom before it'll get going again. At least unless you guys know a button I missed. I pressed all the buttons, and it wouldn't restart again. Let's see, press the button here. There, now it's off. And uh, now nothing I do will get it to go again. Until it hits the bottom. Yeah, then your guy automatically hops off. So that's interesting. Something I did not know about the vehicle. Sorry, excuse me. Come through. Excuse me. <laughs> oh. Good job jousting with this. <laughs> oh, it just sends people flying. Oh. So that's hover pad has got some got some kick to it. Watch out. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, take care everybody. I'm gonna go rest up in the club. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't get lost in here again. <laughs> Not for now. Hi boss. Hi. <laughs> Hey Marcel, keep up the good work. Boss is here. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Maybe we should try for key flaw one more time. At your service, of course. Yeah, let's try for key flaw one more time. Because we're back. You guys are here. And we're now over 10,000 subscribers. So why not? I'll have a little celebratory one more, Macbeth. We had one in our We're Back news episode the other day, or earlier, I should say. So, well, there we go. To you guys. <laughs> Maybe I serve you one too many. Nah, you only serve me one. What are you talking about? See you soon. You should know what you're talking about. I own this club. I can drink as much of my booze as I want. Oh. Jeez, oh, here again. Oh, 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 oh that's nasty. <laughs> uh, no key flam shirt today, everybody. Oh, well. I guess we gotta stick with our Pegasi shirt and the other shirts we already have. How's it going? Yeah, a little rough, but uh, nice new bike. Kind of bike, flying bike, hover bike, jet bike. Yeah. <laughs> a Prezzer sock bike.
<laughs> I was just wondering where it might be. Oh, it's out front. Well, that's okay. We'll get it later. <laughs> that is awesome. Take care, everybody. See you again soon. I'll go grab that bike. Decide where to park it. Wonder, maybe leave it in the terabyte? Can I leave it in the terabyte permanently? Or should I maybe put it somewhere else? Mm. Can we bring it into our garage, right into the terabyte? Not that it matters, you can always just call it your terabyte anyway. Go back in. Terabyte garage. Cool, so we can go right down to our terabyte garage. So I guess two vehicles can go down to the fifth floor. The terabyte and the, the uh, Presser Mark II. Nice. Take care everybody, see you again soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Can I leave it right from here too? Yeah, I bet I can. I could probably fly right out from here. Yep, yeah, cool. Nice to know.